I don't know what your day's been like, but man, I'll tell you, I'm loving it. I'm just loving it. You know, I, I've been planting corn. See, this is corn. And I got two planted over there. And I got four here that I still have to plant. I planted onions and green onions and red onions and white onions and boy, I don't know, squash and we got tomato plants that now are growing their tomatoes finally. You know, they've grown almost five feet tall, <laughs> maybe six. Got strawberries growing and planted them and got all kinds of things growing and growing and man, I'm just I'm just happy as a bug on a rug. <laughs> I feel like the little boat weevil, you know, whoop, looks like the wind's coming up, but planting, you know, is such a wonderful experience because you get a chance to see so much grow, I mean, we have like, in our front window, which faces the uh, west, we have this big, big windows, you know, for the kitchen, two of them, and it's really neat because it's got an old style ledge, you know, and it's really exciting because we put all kinds of plants there now and now we've got our little seedlings growing there and boy they're all ready to go and they've been watered and they're just gonna like ooh, grow 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 you know and I'm so stoked you know to see that you know to make use of where I'm at what I've got with what God has done and you know God has really blessed me I mean I just I just feel like I'm the most spoiled Christian in the world you know I don't own much. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Our car isn't worth much. Boy, that's for sure. <laughs> Still trying to get it fixed. Got one of those kind of like, you know, smog thingies. You know, got a, well, maybe not smog, but the air, whatever. Something or another that I finally had to get rid of my, I called it my Alaska truck. Because it was my car that was, you know, I got for three grand or whatever. And, ran it maybe 200,000 miles to Alaska and back and all over the place until finally we just had to part ways with it. <laughs> but man, it's like, you know, just when you take the things that you have, like I have all these little containers that we used to go out and get chicken in, you know, and they were like, you know, little chicken wing things, you know, and had all this, you know, it's real heavy duty kind of container. So we saved them, you know, because I said, hey, those will work for planters, you know. And my wife kind of looked at me like, yeah, right, sure, sure, you're going to do it. You know, it's kind of like one of those guy things, you know, the guys that always save things and never use them. Not me, man. <laughs> My wife will tell you, everything that I save, I use right away. Because if I can't use it, I get, I lose it. I get used, you know, I get rid of it, basically. And, man, I mean, I make use of everything. I mean, it's so much fun, too. It's like God-inspiring, you know. And I think that's what God does. You know, in His economy, He uses everything. You know, about the time that people think that they're worthless and useless, God uses them for something marvelous and spectacular, you know. And, man, you know, about the time that you think that you got no gifts to offer God, you know, God's going to say, hey, you know what, I want to use you. I don't want to use the guy that's got the gifts. I want to use you because then you'll be dependent upon me. And that's the way I've been. Man, everything I got, you know, it's just like, hey, God, if I can't get it at a 99 cent store or, you know, on sale or cheap, man, we just can't afford it. You know, so everything we grow and got and grow and get and develop and make into something that looks phenomenal now, all came from nothing. <laughs> Matter of fact, I watched them change the planter out. You know, they were taking out these plants that were grown and putting in some different kinds, and they're throwing them away. And I went, ah, I was, uh, I could feel myself clinging to them as they were being taken away. I wanted to go grab some. <laughs> but my wife's going to have a heart attack when she comes home because, you know, we, I know she, we went out and bought all these things, but she didn't expect them to all be planted so fast and to see what it's going to look like. You know, she's always amazed at how I design things and put things out, you know, and I kind of said prayer, you know, to help ask God to help me do it, you know, and then God kind of comes to me and says, so what'd you do, you know, <laughs> I show him, you know, and he kind of helps me, inspires me to go in the right direction with some things, you know, and then some things I temporarily do it, I go, you know, I don't like that, Lord, what do you think, and then I kind of, you know, kind of fidget with it until finally I just change it, and then, man, like just today, 
we had these long boards that I've used for right along the edging of the deck, and it's like perfect for the planters. Now I got all these planters that are just like all covered. And it's just beautiful. I mean, man, it's like I said, come on over, visit. Sit a spell, you know, enjoy it. Smell the roses. We don't have any roses, but, you know, well, the, the apartment complex does. But, you know, I just love it because sometimes you just go, God, that's too good. Oh. Now, I'll admit, you know, other people, you know, they got their boats and their Harleys and their, I don't know, cruise ships, you know, and their long vacations and their this, that, and the other thing, you know, and shoot, when my wife has to take her vacation, you know, we go camping where it's free, <laughs> someplace where nobody else is, you know, and doesn't have any facilities, because if we, they did, they'd charge us, so we have to go, like, way out in the middle of the boonies, you know, and just kind of hang out, you know, and enjoy the wilderness because we really can't afford to do those kind of things you know that other people do but man you know I have found so much satisfaction in being less than the gratification I see in others that have more you know the guys that got their three hundred dollar bikes or three thousand dollar bicycles you know, I mean bicycles can you imagine that like a, a hundred or three hundred or five hundred dollar bicycle not me or like designer shoes, you know, they, they spend 50 to to $100 on Jordans or something, you know. Who knows what it is nowadays? Might be Kobe's. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's dumb. Man, you know, so much could be done, you know, in the name of the sun if we just spend our time using it wisely, you know, and being satisfied with less so that we could give him more. And I think that's kind of what I enjoy about my life is that, Oh, I have a lot less than what I could have. You know, well, I could go back to work, you know, and not spend any time in the ministry. And, or maybe just the Sunday time, you know, the Wednesday time, you know, like most people do. You know, and make a bundle of money, you know, and just be aggravated and, you know, kind of like work it out, you know, and deal with it. But, you know, I kind of like spending time with God, you know. I like enjoying His presence, you know. I like sitting across the table from Him, you know, and spending some time. You know, Lord, I mean, it's kind of nice having you here. <laughs> you seem to bless me phenomenally. You know, like with hummingbirds and frogs croaking and crickets cricking. Crickets cricket? <laughs> and plants growing, you know, and man, I almost expect to hear him speak to me one of these days. Wouldn't that be a shock? Bad enough, God talks to me, but imagine the plants too. <laughs> Somebody lock me up. Boy, even if the mountains will clap their hands and the trees shout for joy. Ooh, never mind, or the stones cry out. Ooh, we don't go to those scriptures. But you know, I just can't believe how good it really is when God blesses you and you just sit back and you just go, oh, that's too much. Oh, Lord, not more, not more. Oh, it's like being tickled. It's like tickled pink, you know, or like tickling me, tickle me more, or a little tickle monster or something, you know. I just get a kick out of it. Some days God is so good. Whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. The God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Hereby we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and will come unto him, and make our abode with him. You know, I always tell people that, read the words in red, and just do them. That's what Jesus said. I mean, right here is what he said. If you love me, he will. if a man love me, he will keep my words. Now, how can you keep your words, how can you keep Jesus' words if you're making an allegory out of it, or a metaphor, or if you're making it a high ideal? How do you keep the word? You know what I mean? How do you do the word if you're making it into something that you have to interpret? Because the only reason I can see that people really sit down to interpret the word is so that they don't have to do it. So that they won't do it, so that they can compromise it. Now, when I read Jesus' words, I'll admit, it slaps me in the face. Because it's like, love your enemies? Are you kidding me? Turn the other cheek? Are you out of your mind? But right here, this is what Jesus says. If a man love me, he will keep my words. And what else does he say? 
and my father will love him. I mean, oh my God, what price is your pride, really, to give up your guns and give up your violence in order to have the love of the father? What cost is it to you personally, you know, if you say you do perish or you die? You live eternity with God. Is that such a bad thing? Sometimes I wonder what people are thinking. I don't know. Seems to me like it's a lot easier to just enjoy life than it is to go about trying to protect it or fight it or, you know, shoot it up or, you know, abuse it or get violent about it. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. All we got to do is be like Jesus. Maybe you don't want to. Maybe you do want to go get a gun. Maybe you want to get a security system, and you want to have you know, video cameras everywhere, and you want to live in panic and terror of what's coming on in the world. But you know, I'm going to be like this plant. I'm going to bloom. I'm going to grow. I'm going to get watered, and I'm going to enjoy the sun. I don't know about you, you know, you want to go do that other thing. Can you go far away? You know, I really don't want to hear about it, because I like enjoying God. I like what God does for me. He protects me. He guides me. He leads me. He does everything for me. He does everything in me. He takes care of me. He provides for my sustenance. He provides for my needs. He has become my all. And I don't speak the words as though they were some symbolic thing and you know of course you got to get up off your butt and do something no I'm saying you know what no you don't if God doesn't tell you to get off your butt don't do it <laughs> sit on your butt get mad at God and just stay there do it Jonah did you know that Jonah did that he said look I'm not getting off my butt until you do something you told me you were going to destroy that city I'm sitting here until you do so God says fine you're going to sit there so he caused this tree to grow up over him it shaded him, and then he caused the tree to wither, you know, in the noonday sun, and then it died, you know, and God was trying to give him an object lesson and say, look, you know, you can sit on your butt, but I'm going to make you move one way or another. <laughs> well, Jonah learned his lesson, you know. God does what he chooses to, according to his will, and not yours. Frankly, I'm with Jonah. Sit on your butt until God moves. He will. You will. One way or another. <laughs> But I prefer to be like these plants that are blooming, to be like God causing me to be in the garden of my soul, that he is the gardener and I am the planting of the Lord, that he is causing me to bear fruit, to be peaceful, to be loving, to be joyful, to be tender, to be meek, to be humble. Well, sort of. <laughs> you know, we're working on it. You know, to be considerate, to be kind, to be gentle. You know, we're working on that too. <laughs> But he is at work in us, both to do and to will of his good pleasure, to cause us to not be like the world. If you've got guns and you know you think that you're you're going to be safe in some kind of like you know shelter you're building underneath your house, or you've got some false walls, or you know you got some false security in your armaments, man, you got the wrong God. I'm sorry, you're just missing what Jesus said. If you love him, you'll do his commandments. If turning the other cheek means you're going to shoot someone. You've done the wrong thing, and you're heading the wrong way, and you're not a Christian, according to what the Bible says. Sorry, but that's the way it works. God doesn't look for you to be our defense. God said He will be defense, and He will judge, and He will reward according to His wrath. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. What more do we need to say? If God be for us, why are we worried about who's against us? Personally, I'm not one of those people that worry. <laughs> I'm too busy enjoying God to worry about what everybody else seems worried about. <laughs>